The Texas legislature will vote on hundreds of bills each session. Often those debates can get overlooked, even on critical legislation. That's why we've asked legislators to come to TPPF to talk about their bills to make sure you stay on top of the most important issues making their way through the Capitol. This is The Layout. I'm David Ballad, and today we're discussing HB 25 with Representative James Tallarico. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us about what sparked this bill and the problem that you're trying to solve. Yeah, so we have a crisis in this country and in this state with the cost of prescription drugs. Um, Texans pay more than twice as much for their medicine than folks in Canada do. And so I've introduced this bill along with Chairman James Frank, uh, my good friend who's been my partner on this bill, since the beginning to allow for the safe importation of certain prescription drugs from Canada that can save Texans um, on cost and provide that life-saving medication. Well, take us through the bill and tell us how it works. Yeah, so it would create this wholesale importation program through that would serve under the Health and Human Services Commission, and it would um, it would create an application that we would submit to the FDA that that would allow for a Texas wholesaler to partner with a Canadian wholesaler and import a certain number of prescription drugs for the use of Texans. Um, everything has to meet FDA standards. Safety is paramount in this bill. Every stage of the importation process has to meet FDA standards for safety, has to comply with all U.S. safety laws, um, but it could provide real benefits. And the estimates are that it could save 60, 70 percent on the price of prescription drugs for Texans. So it could be a game changer in um, in our drug market. Well, you've, you've told us what the goals are. It's obviously to bring down the cost of the medication. Yeah. Um, having affordable medication is important because yeah. oftentimes people, especially with diabetes and looking That's at right. insulin, they're having to choose between eating and taking medication. That's exactly right. Uh, once implemented and once put in, in into practice, how do you see this working out? Yeah, you know, I, I, you mentioned that we have Texans who are having to choose between affording their medications and affording groceries or affording rent, mm -hmm. and that's causing Texans to skip doses or to go without their medication entirely. And actually, we've got more than 100,000 Americans dying each year because they're not taking the medication that they're prescribed. So the status quo is dangerously unsafe, um, and that's why we have to do something. And we rarely get an opportunity in that big, beautiful pink building to make a tangible difference in the lives of Texans. This is one of those rare opportunities. And I, I want to point out that six states have already passed these laws, states as different as Florida and Colorado and New Hampshire and Vermont, and New Mexico. And so that means they are at the front of the line to be a part of this when the FDA approves it. And my goal is to get Texans at the front of the line so they can realize the biggest savings from an importation program. I'm glad you brought up the, the, those other states. So this isn't something that's a theory. It's no. it's 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 uh, being done, and yeah. there's still further interest by other states. That's right. And I'm glad to see that uh, we're doing that here in Texas. Now there are several groups that claim that we shouldn't do it because it isn't it isn't an effective solution to systemic domestic drug pricing issues. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, one, I think it's important to recognize that a lot of the uh, actually. All the groups that are opposed to it um, are ones who directly benefit from big pharma, um, whether it's their lobbyists or their associations. Um, the, the groups that don't benefit financially from this bill tend to be for it, right? AARP, this group, um, as well as advocates around the state, leaders as diverse as, you know, President Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders support this. So it, it kind of runs the gamut, right? Um, you've got everybody pretty much looking at this and thinking, this is common sense, right? It introduces competition to the market and puts downward pressure on, on drug prices in the United States, and in Texas in particular. Uh, you brought up insulin. So I worked with Senator Kolkhorst um, and Dr. Oliverson last session to cap insulin copays at, at $25 per prescription. That put pressure on the federal government to cap uh, uh, insulin copays at $35 for Medicare. And then that put pressure on the big three insulin manufacturers, which, by the way, they have a monopoly um, on, on insulin. It put pressure on them to slash their prices, which they did last week. They did. So this model works, right? The pressure works. 
I'm just running the same playbook with this bill for all pharmaceutical drugs. Great. So I'm interested. What kind of a reaction have you gotten from, from Texans since filing the bill? I think there's um, excitement that elected leaders are finally standing up to special interests to do what's right for them, right? Um, there are lobbyists in that building who represent Big Pharma, and everybody needs a lawyer um, and deserves a lawyer, and I'm, yeah. I'm not begrudging them that. But I'm the lawyer for my constituents, right? I'm fighting for them. And the status quo is unsafe for them and their families, and it has to change. The last thing I've heard uh, that I think is important is I've heard from faith leaders that this is a moral issue. Um, for anybody who's read the Gospels, if you look at what Jesus spends his time doing, it's not organizing political rallies or recruiting people to a church. It's healing people, right? That's what Jesus spends all his time doing, even when the powers that be tell him he's not doing it in the right way, right, or following the right rules. He heals people anyway. We have an opportunity with this bill to heal people, and it's a moral obligation that we all have, regardless of what political party you're in, to pass this legislation, bring down prescription drug costs, and save lives. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.